Three, two, one. <laughs> That'll do I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you sync your audio and your video. So the the clap appears in the audio of the and in the video you can see the clap and then you go so you don't end up with We're losing valuable time here. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Gamecast episode three. James introduce yourself. Hello, my name is James. And we also have a new member today. Darren say hello for the first time officially. Hey, how's it going? I was thrown in the boot of a car and I woke up in this chair. How's everyone? It wasn't. It wasn't. So strange because they're looking at a separate camera to me. So I'm staring at Darren's tits basically here. <laughs> um, so it's been a while since we're doing our last podcast. We have a new setup this time with a multi-camera, which means a lot more editing for me. Whippy. Bleh, yippee. So we'll start off nice and easy. What have you been playing at the moment? Uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> is that the one that just got a new DLC? Uh, they don't really release DLC. Well, yeah, I suppose they haven't really done anything recently. Yeah, they do it's like a season, seasonal event kind of thing where each year, or every couple of months, they bring out updates along the way. Like, so, yeah. I've never really understood the kind of appeal of that game. Ah, it's like if you ever, if you ever played like uh, Rainbow Six, the Vegas ones. If you play those, they're stealth I'm... shooters, but like it's. 5v5 it's very competitive it's kind of like counter strike but i think that's what turns me off it so much is the competitive nature when i'm playing game and i play it for kind of just for fun just to relax i don't want to be so stressed that i'm just like shit what do i do, what do, I do? yeah that's kind of the thing that puts me off those kind of shooters as well is like i don't want to uh, like if i make a slight uh, mistake during the match I don't want my teammates to rip me apart like yeah. i want people to laugh at the mistake and not like you know say they want to um, write my mom over it hmm. That doesn't matter. It's not one of those kind. Of, it's not Modern Warfare Two, where it's little shitheads on the no, Xbox. Yeah. Hey, fuck you, fuck your man, bitch. <laughs> Just going off top again. Do you think the new Modern Warfare reboot that we discovered at E Three, which we'll be talking about later, do you think that's going to have the same kind of community, or do you think we've kind of grown up a bit since the kind of fuck your man stage? Nah, you know, I'd imagine they yeah. always do. They it's going to be very divisive. I think, divisive, we'll, isn't I think it? we'll be able to handle it better <laughs> this time because if someone says it, like we're old enough and mature enough now to just go delete yeah i think it's going to be quite divisive like there's going to be like the people that grew up with it that have like matured and stuff and then there's going to be like new kids that are jumping in on it but like i mean the adults are probably going to listen to the kids insulting each other with nostalgia i mean that's yeah. part and parcel of the experience yeah. really, just going to ride them up and keep them going <laughs> just for the laugh just like women did you not ride his mother <laughs> get her so james uh, darren what have you been playing uh, probably something very hard and obscure <clears throat> Yeah, um, I've been playing the masterpiece known as Knack 2, uh, one of the most beloved uh, PlayStation 4 exclusives ever created, I'm sure you know. Yes, um, Knack 2? Knack 2, yeah. There was Knackers a, 2. You're right, James, there was a second Just one. Knack 2. Nobody asked for it, but it happened anyway. <laughs> we were talking about this in our own time before. <laughs> yeah, nobody asked for it, but it happened anyway. Knack 2, Pikes and Trappings. <laughs> I'm unaware of this game. Do you want to explain the premise of the series, considering it is a series now that I'm barely aware of? Okay, so you play as, uh, basically, it's this cartoony kind of Disney Pixar-esque world where, like, these humans live in these advanced cities and they have to ward off attacks from this race of feral goblins living off in the wastelands and stuff. Uh, so this scientist guy creates this little, uh, this little new mascot guy uh, called Knack, who's made out of these relics that belong to an ancient civilization. Mm. Uh, and he has the ability to absorb, like, uh, like relics from... Yeah. all sorts of sort they, they use relics as a power source so they're using like car engines and machinery and that kind of stuff so he can absorb them and basically increase in size and strength uh, and he uses those abilities to fight the goblins basically uh, I'm not saying it's the new Shakespeare or anything but it's what it is you make it sound better than the, the gameplay I've seen makes the trailer makes the game actually look mm. like it, when I'm looking at it, it just I feel like when it, the first one came out all you saw was gameplay yeah, it doesn't ooze story. Honestly, it's it's really shallow. Like the story's not too great. The voice acting is bland as all hell. It was basically designed as a tech demo when the PS4 right. came out to yeah. show how powerful the processor That's is. That's what because, I, was, like, I was saying. Like they, yeah. they just showed the gameplay and they didn't show anything. Else exactly. Yeah. The story, so. Because the gameplay is all it has going for it. Yeah. But even then, the combat's really finicky. Like it's incredibly unforgiving and. I I can count on one hand the amount of times I actually managed to finish a combo move. Uh, in the game because every time I try the enemies just come in and henpeck me to death in like 
literally seconds sometimes it's very unforgiving and that's uneasy <laughs> that's uneasy I haven't even gone near hard like I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to cheat with co-op just have a second yeah. controller there so I can keep spawning and doing it over and over again but I enjoy it because it's really it's, it's simple you mm. know just just go into this place beat the crap out of these guys jump across a few platforms find all the collectibles and you're done you know games like that don't exist anymore they're too they're too yeah. dense nowadays you know yeah like Ratchet and Clank kind of. yeah exactly yeah, yeah Ratchet and Clank that's, what I, Baxter. that's actually what I've been playing recently with Ratchet and Clank the 2016 one uh, no the ones like Tools of Destruction Quest oh, for Booty oh so good yeah Crack and Time the Future yeah. Trilogy was yeah. such yeah. such a good trilogy sexual innuendo in every single title oh of course yeah oh I didn't even get that till I was 17 it's the Ratchet and Clank experience yeah. Like, yeah. yeah Quest for Booty <laughs> well I myself have been continuing to play Days Gone, and now that I finally stopped looking at it as if it's a game of the year candidate, I'm actually enjoying it. Mm-hmm. When I was talking about this before you came, or well, just after you came, is that it does that thing in some games. Skyrim is particularly bad for it, where it sets a waypoint on the map. When you arrive at that waypoint, there's an entrance to a cave or something about a mile back that you should have gone through, and you're actually standing on the objective, but you t- it takes you about another 10 minutes to get to it because you've follow the waypoint mm. it just frustrates me deeply uh, and just, you walk to it and then you're looking at it like I'm there and then it just goes Ooh. yes yeah. it's just like <laughs> the waypoint yeah, is just like a star going around just shit Jesus Christ but things like that in the game if you can kind of just like ignore those kind of things there is a kind of a fun element to the game like the horde system they have is amazing mm. um, I've never been so afraid going into like a cave system and the, like they don't have many caves in it but when you find them you're just like do I want to go in here and there has been an occurrence that literally happened about two hours uh, as a recording that I went into a cave to get the the upgrade system which is a, a, an ejector that gives you like steroid boost heroin yeah <laughs> heroin I think that would have a negative effect on you day is gone stop <laughs> taking heroin <laughs> whoa just wakes up <laughs> Jesus, it seems like there's been days gone <laughs> he did it he said the thing <laughs> Anyway, you, I went in there to get that and it was literally like on the other end of the cave and in between there's like a load of sleeping zombies and I was like, is it fucking work going through here? And I literally just went like, creek, a small stone room. Is, uh, it, like, is it like I Am Legend? Like yeah. He walks into the building and he yeah. sees him all like, oh, I really like that. <laughs> it really is. I think they literally just watched that scene and went, that's our sales pitch. I love the sense of tension. Like, yeah. I love scenes like that in movies and games. It really works in that game. I was like, is it work going for this? Because uh, they really make like one on one with an enemy easy two on one you're gonna need to dive out of the way here and there when it gets over 10 you better have your stamina upgraded to the fa- to the fastest you can be and just sprint the hell out of there because <laughs> I had like a hundred running after me today and I was just like there's no point even shooting them I may as well just like let them kill me so I can respawn a mile away from there and just never go near there again <clears throat> literally have it marked on my map never go here again but yeah that's what I'm playing now at the moment so yeah so, moving into the first question. E3 has just passed. How do you feel regarding E3 this year? Did any annu- uh, announcements, per- in particular, excite you? Animal Crossing, in a heartbeat. Animal Crossing. Really? Uh, hell yeah, new Animal Crossing. I'm so excited for that. I, I saw that. <laughs> I saw Animal Crossing, and I just I looked at the noose I had ready in my kitchen. I was like, not today. Another <laughs> reason to live. live. <laughs> Is that the game where like some people were saying like it, it's like slavery? Where like they force a house on you, you have to earn that house back. They force yeah. like, is that yeah. the game? It's like yeah, it's like that picture of like the really cute font, but it just says a lifetime of death, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's basically it. But like, um, yeah. So the premise of it is like you're just you're this cute little person that for reasons unknown is just on a train to like wherever, mm-hmm. and you end up in this small town that like you get to name. Um, so you go there and like you literally start off in like a tent. You have like a tent, a lamp, and a bed. That's it, and you you can like. You can do pretty much anything you want in the town for money. Mm. Like you can, I think there's. Don't jobs. say that. <laughs> I think down the docks by giving hand shandies. No, we're not. We're not talking about room, thir- room thirty four stuff today. Um, room thirty four. You, you can like you can literally just look pick up, up like <laughs> don't don't look it up. <laughs> you can pick up like uh, like apples and like seashells from the beach, and you can go fish, and then you can sell them in the shop and uh, use the money to buy like new items of furniture and like uh, add rooms to your house and that stuff. But um, you can actually get the house upgrades for free, but then you spend, like, every hour of gameplay paying it back to, like, Tom Nook, the character in the game. So that's where, like, the whole meme comes from of, like, a lifetime of... I've seen him just, like, walking into where you live, and he's like, you need a bigger space here, and just, like, makes you take this house. (laughs) It's like, what the fuck? 
giving me a mortgage. Like it's pretty, like it's actually so rewarding when you pay off your debt because it literally like your character does this little victory pose and goes, <laughs> "You paid off your debt," and then fucking in comes Tom Nook. There, like you could sure use another room in your house, huh? <laughs> It'll cost you one million bills. Sold. <laughs> what Good is animal. Tom? He what animal, animal is he? I remember seeing him. Oh, he's um, he like I thought he was a raccoon when I looked at him, but he doesn't actually have the mask or anything as far as I know. He's he's some other sort of like obscure rodent that I don't know. Just a, a little bastard more than anything. <laughs> James Chinchilla. <laughs> I don't know. I like, think I haven't really watched E three because it just feels very samey. So did anyone? Uh huh. Did anyone watch the full thing? I didn't know. I didn't watch the full thing anyway. I seen. I <clears throat> I watched a few people put up like. Is it, I've watched like I've looked at the articles after it and again it's just EA same like they didn't really release anything it's just mm. it's like we've already gone told you what we're releasing <laughs> we're just gonna go through it all again here's a bunch of game updates and that was it and then Xbox not really too much mm. here's a couple I'd be very pessimistic right now yeah. you know, there's a couple of games for like, uh, there wasn't Xbox anything Game Pass that, that like stood out for like oh I can't wait for that like one thing that did actually really intrigue me was you know Ghostwire Tokyo you I thought that would yeah, intrigue you. yeah, like you know, you love you know, you know me. I love the paranormal stuff. I love mm. any kind of spooky stuff. And as that great woman on stage said, it's spooky. <laughs> the way oh. she said it was perfect. But like Japanese, like ghost stories and mythology are just the best. Like they have this really particular way of telling like ghost stories and doing horror. Mm. So if it's like what I'm thinking, things like I don't know, um, like the Grudge or um, uh, what's it called uh, um, one missed call or something. I think that's it, yeah. If it's anything like those movies put in with like the kind of action that I think it might be, mm. I'm going to be really excited for it. How overpowered do you want the enemies to be like compared to your character to get a genuine fright? Like, Do you want like Sekiro <laughs> level of difficulty? I haven't actually played Sekiro. Let's see, alright, Bloodborne. Yeah. You yeah. want that kind yeah, of difficulty? I, I want them to be able to kill me in like a heartbeat because I messed up. Not because of yes. the game's fault. Like I want it to be my fault, and it's it's purely a skill thing. Mm. But I want to be also be able to mess them up in a heartbeat from being good enough, you know. And maybe animations that are just like let's say like a death animation that is just terrifying. That would yeah. that would really sell it for me anyway. I'm not gonna be playing it because I know no good at those type of games. <laughs> like if they were to throw in like Japanese urban myth kind of ghosts, I'd be so happy. Like there's this one story called Teke Teke. Uh, it's about like this woman that she fell onto some train tracks. Mm. And like a train ran over her and basically I really hate when that like cut her legs off. I know that's that's a pain. It's a pain in the arse. Like, um, she, yeah, she basically lost her legs, but then she was so angry that her ghost stayed alive and like chases people by running around like on her hands. And they like, call her Teki Teki because it's like the the phonetic sound that her hands make mm. of like you know, yeah, you because know, her nails like, yeah. So if they threw in something like that, I'd be well shot. She just she just denied at herself for being stupid. <laughs> So she came back yeah. as a ghost. Fuck! Don't everyone else because of her own stupidity. Oh no, it, it's it's darker now. She she was like she was like raped and she was running away like all all right, the straw and stuff. Killed so. her happiness there. <laughs> oh no, she was just silly. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing at me! <laughs> no, oh no, raped. my legs are perfect. Yeah, yeah sure. she wasn't raped. She was just a gobshite. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, I worked. I unlike you two actually did pay attention to E three most of the way through because you know I like to prepare for these kind of things. What did grab my attention, but not fully, was Star Wars and The Avengers. Obviously, because I'm a big fan of both franchises. The reasons why I didn't like the Star Wars one as much as I should is because I think they gave away a bit too much, if that makes any sense. It's like when a movie reveals every single aspect of the story in its trailer, which they kind of did yeah. with the game a bit. They sold all their kind of their like biggest bits of the game too early I think I would have liked the hype to be built up closer to the game mm. with Avengers I'm not a fan of just one thing and it's so petty all the characters are like loosely based on the the MCU characters which I'm, I'm fine with because those are what everyone knows Bruce Banner is too alike Mark Ruffalo in the fucking movie or in the game mm. I really don't like that because I don't think Mark Ruffalo is a great Hulk which is very controversial but I would have preferred if there was more kind of like, like Ed Norton was the best Bruce Banner I've seen yeah. in the movies. I would prefer it to look more like him. Do not rather them show you more now. 
and have all the information to hand, then Redder gets drips and drabs and then played and it's just a shit game. No, because I'm going to buy it anyway. <laughs> Star Wars and yeah. this Avengers. I'm going to be buying it anyway. Because <laughs> I'm hoping that this Star Wars game is a, like, let's say, like a spiritual sequel to Force Unleashed, which is a really, really good Star Wars game. Yeah, I love Force Whereas Unleashed, yeah. The second one isn't as good because they don't, they did literally it's just like a DLC for the first game. They didn't really make too many advances. Yeah, it didn't need to happen, did it? No. Like, like I'm glad it did, but it just they left it on a cliffhanger, which really bugged me. And then Lucasarts got closed down, unfortunately. Yeah. But if this happens, I'll be so excited. Uh, Insomnia's Insomnia, isn't it? Insomnia's Spider Man. If this is a shared universe, how fucking good would that be? Yeah. I know that they're going to have issues with Spider-Man being exclusive to PlayStation, oh, yeah, yeah. whereas this game is going to be across, cross-platform. Well, how cool would it be to have... That'd be really cool, yeah, yeah because even, even during the Spider-Man game, like I think if you take a picture of the Avengers Tower... Uh, he people, does quote them. He, yeah, he mentions something about them like sorting out something on like the West Coast or yes, something. Yeah. Uh, so the West Coast uh, events in question could be the events mm. of the upcoming Avengers game. So yeah. I think that'd be a good way to... You know, it, like that one little <clears throat> strand that Insomniac gave, if they could like take that and use it to link it to their game, that'd be pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, dangerous close to end that camera. <laughs> another thing I think has huge another thing that has huge potential is they also mentioned the Sanctum Septum in uh, Spider Man, hmm. which is the home of obviously Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme. There was a game that actually on this magazine called Control that deals with kind of like uh, telekinesis and all that kind of shit and it looks really promising mm-hmm. we could even get like a huge universe of games and the let's say the gameplay and control could easily transfer to our amazing Doctor Strange game that would like I'd buy in a heartbeat as in like this game control would like lay the foundation for yes. a future yeah, yeah yeah that'd be pretty cool like do you know the way Quantum Break like it had good aspects but like the game was just a disaster like get like that put control give me like a Doctor Strange kind of like <clears throat> mirror universe where he goes in just bashing people It'd be so good. Yeah, that'd be good. Like, it doesn't even need to be, like, open world. Just give me, like, linear story. Mm-hmm. I'd be, like, really, really happy with that. <laughs> so that was it for E3 this year. Not much to watch. It was. It just felt like it was just there. Last year was better. Even though I didn't watch it last year. The hype was there, there was last more year. more happened last year. Yeah. More was announced. And I, th- I noticed that a lot of the bigger companies now, like Nintendo, they're not really taking part. Nintendo them. Direct is happening doing now. their own thing. Mm-hmm. And I think Sony are State of Play are doing Sony, Sony are doing State of Play. This yeah. is the first year since the E three started that Sony have not appeared. Yeah. I do see them going back. Maybe this is actually a good thing to stop companies going on stage like Microsoft do, where they just go, Shit, we need something. We have and the, I I specifically remember them say saying we have sixty games on show here today and I remember just thinking, fifty of those are going to be bollocks. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> like little side scrollers. Yeah. And I was right. Uh Hopefully, this is just a sign that the companies are just pulling back until they have something actually to show at E3 next year or something like that. Mm. And then it becomes a big spectacle. Because I do enjoy mm. getting my games shown to me in like a grand presentation kind of style. I don't want it in drips and drabs throughout the year. I want it to be like a, like a let's say, like a WrestleMania time of year or like a World Cup final kind of thing where you get excited for it every year. Like Christmas for gamers. So yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. I don't know about either of you. Yeah, no, I'd be more or less the same now. Yeah, like mm. I, I always really, really crave like big like surprise announcements mm. um so i'm always unfortunately that's my expectation so i'm often let down like yeah. nintendo for example like yeah i was delighted to see finally some sort of news and gameplay about animal crossing breath of the wild 2 breath of the wild 2 yeah, yeah. delighted with that delighted with animal crossing got a good bit of news and gameplay on luigi's mansion 3 but people were hoping for like a more news on metroid prime 4 oh, or like yeah. maybe some sort of news about like a metroid prime hd trilogy and there was absolutely nothing about that. So, yeah, that's sad, like, it. like all disappointment yeah. comes from expectations not being met. So it's kind of my own fault for like expecting mm-hmm. Metroid news. But yeah, yeah. Like I do find that they do come on stage just to fill time. We've actually we just kicked people out. For anyone who doesn't know, we we are actually currently recording above my housemate, and he's just left probably because we're just being so loud. But anyway, um, yeah. So that was E three this year. Hopefully next year is a bit better. Yeah. So moving on. The next generation of consoles seem to be gathering hype with rumours of the PS5 being released in 2020 and the Xbox Scarlet being dropped in holiday period of 2020. Which console are you leaning towards and why? Do you want to start, Darren? So I'm thinking if the new Xbox uh, learns from the Xbox One's mistake, uh, mistakes and I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and brings out more exclusives that just aren't going to come to PC anyway. Uh, maybe then people would have more of a reason to invest in that 
instead of the the PS5, um, because li like literally, like I was going to, like, the only time I entertained getting an Xbox One was to play the Ma the Halo Master Chief Collection, mm -hmm. and then I found out that was coming to Steam anyway, and they didn't really have any other exclusives going for them that weren't on PC already, mm -hmm. so I just didn't really have a reason to get an Xbox, you know. So if they learn from that and keep exclusives genuinely exclusive as an incentive to kind of bring people over to the platform, mm. uh, it might be interesting, especially if they bring out like a new like Fable or bring back one of their past IPs like Blinks the Time Sweeper or something like that. They, it seems to have like, left a lot of their exclusives behind. They have like um, there's there's like this meme of like um, a lot a lot of like doors. Like they've kept the, key, the keys of like Halo and Gears mm. and they kind of yeah. revive them every now and then, but mm. well, I think they over rely else, on them. Everything else just kind of seemed to... Everything, yeah, like, just seemed to like die. It. It's like they're almost afraid to commit on, like, a brand new mm. exclusive. Mm. Which I don't I don't suppose they're in, in any position to kind of just dive straight into an exclusive because Xbox are making enough money that they don't need to panic. Mm. And they're, like, the third, the third party developer is, like, wet dream. Yeah, it's my access to PC and Xbox. I'm winning. Mm. But, um, I've obviously always... I've been straight down the middle my whole life. I've always had Xbox and I've always had PlayStation at the same time. The reason why I have Xbox now is strictly because it's where all my friends play online. And I find it's easier that way, to play online with them. Because on PlayStation, I don't like the interface as much as I do with the Xbox. Let's say, let's say just when you're playing online. Yeah. Everything else, PlayStation all the way. I love the menu system. But I think it's easier access for, not for me, for the other guys who don't know how to navigate like the PlayStation, how to add friends and xbox even though like it's literally the exact same only one's more color than the other one but i will be going for ps5 first strictly because i know that the games released on launch are going to be a lot better than the games on xbox scarlet on launch yeah. and i've heard that the specs on the ps5 are actually going to tip slightly in their favor do you reckon they're going to tip in a way that's actually meaningful because i think people are saying they're like you know i think they said the ps4 they said the same thing about the PS4, didn't they, when it came out? That yeah. it's going to be slightly more powerful than the Xbox One, mm -hmm. but like it's marginally not, minuscule. Like it's it's yeah. such a small difference that it's not going to make yeah. even like one frame of a but difference. It like, still help them in the um, long run. After that, didn't after Microsoft's E3 presentation where they reveal reveal uh, Scarlet, I literally just felt like they have literally just copied everything Sony said in the State mm -hmm. of Play video. I was like, they probably don't even have any idea how they're going to achieve this. They just set the goal. Yep, we're going to copy them and do everything they did. And we're just going to call it Scarlet, which I think is a shit name. But uh, Is that just like the code name? Yes, yeah, that's, that's the project name. It's going to be called oh. like Xbox One, X1, 5, 3 or something like that. You know, just random numbers. Xbox it's long. 2. <laughs> the Xbox, the Xbox One, 2, the sequel. <laughs> it kills me that we have to refer to the original Xbox as Xbox Classic, according to Microsoft. It's, I just call it the OG Xbox. I was really? watching a video the other day and it was a guy, his Xbox gamer tag was Xbox off. And he was in a lot of people. And he, was like, and he was like taking the piss out of all these other people, like trolling them. And he was like, this guy, Xbox off, get the fuck away from me. Oh, <laughs> and he was shit. trying to get them to like turn their Xbox back. <laughs> they can't and they were like, oh my God, this guy, Xbox off. Do you think they'd really like see through that? I seen one guy who had a, his bio on Xbox 360 as Microsoft sucks balls. It took him a year to realize that he had it up, and he got blocked for I think for like a month. <laughs> <laughs> they let him back on, but they were like, "You have to change everything." <laughs> um, yeah, James, you're probably gonna stick with PlayStation. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with PlayStation Nation. Yeah, all yeah. the way through, especially the whole cross uh, back backwards compatibility. Really good selling um, point. Yeah, so oh, long definitely. Now. Yeah, we've said it in the last video that I'm, if we could put Metal Gear Solid One into a PlayStation Five, play it. Get sick of it ten minutes later. Turn it off. Play. Yeah. Like I got a war too. Amazing. I had a sixty, the original sixty gig PS3 for ages, and it was just dead. Yeah. And I really can just yeah. play PS1 games on disc, PS2 games on disc, PS3 games yeah, on the disc. The sixty gig one. That's the one yeah. with the actual PS2 processor. The one with the yeah. actual yeah. PS2 yeah. processor, and it, it weighs a ton. <laughs> it's the heaviest. I've seen it. It's a big fuck I, off I, I box. Like eleven sockets. I have the sixty sockets, gig one, and then I have the later. Uh, 80 gig one where they took out all the bits in it and it off no no is it still going yeah it's still going right. and yeah so I had like the 60 gig one and then there's the later 80 gig one where they gutted it to shit I remember hearing about and it and like if I brought the two of these things you weighed them like you'd be like 
one yeah. angle. Yeah, the eighty one yes. it does like it does software emulation for PS2. And they got rid of it. Yeah. They got rid of it. Oh, they got rid of it completely yeah. for the eighty. Yeah. Oh fuck. Okay. I've always, do you know, when they say like, oh, it's just, it's just like a, a small <coughs> console, I couldn't give a fuck if I have to like get a wheelbarrow to carry this thing into my house as long as it just it's not going to be moving like <laughs> I don't care what the size of it is but yeah but that's the big selling point if I could just have one console that plays PS4 PS3 PS1 I'd be and we, we were saying as well we wouldn't even care PSP about the resolution about the stretch UMG slot boom <laughs> honestly like um, like if I can just pop in the disc and play it again that would be great but realistically I think that's not going to be that they're, they're going to find a way to sell you your games all over again like mm. oh it's going right, to be up in the store yeah. immediately oh, like yeah. Um, like Resident Evil series like they've been released on every generation of Playstation you still can get like Playstation or Resident Evil 1 on the store for a tenner so like mm. you can still do it but it doesn't feel the same I want to yeah. feel that disc in my hand I hope they unify the store right what I mean by that is if you go into the PS3 Playstation yeah. store you have a huge backlog of PS1 games a huge backlog of PS2 games Yeah. and if you go into the PS4 it's just non-existent it's like a very small I mean, it, it is there but it's mm. like counted on your hand like I remember them saying when the PlayStation 4 was released that, that because of the new the way that we've designed the that, architecture yeah it, the backward compatibility won't work I didn't realise it would happen online as well with digital content mm. like if that makes sense like surely it was just a tweak I don't know like it, surely it was just a tweak of a button yeah, like, can't mm. be that hard to put an emulator on it yeah like I, I don't know none of us work in game zones so I know. I know. They they probably, judging by how they handle the PlayStation One Classic, I'd imagine they just would handle emulation like really weirdly because the the PS One Classic, uh, actually plays PS One games by using an emulator that yeah. was developed by an open emulator, isn't a, it? An open source emulator. Yeah. Mm. So, like, there's nothing they they are allowed to use it because after all, they made the console that the emulator was designed to emulate. Yeah. But um, like uh, like people were asking like, is it cool that they are making money off mm. of it? off of like something developed by other people even if it's emulating their own console yeah. it's a bit of a weird one yeah you yeah. think someone would have just sat down and went oh yeah we'll just use our own stuff yeah like it seems it, the playstation classic was such a disaster i think yeah. uh like people it's 30 euro on game stuff if you want one actually so it's you just went from 100 down to 30 euro. Yeah, that just shows <laughs> that just, like the playstation classic is perfect for people in their 40s who just want to kick back and enjoy some old games but like mm. the people like us aren't going to get the value out of it when we can just dust off the old playstation one and just play our actual games mm. so yeah moving on uh crash team racing remastered is now upon us with yet another remastered game being dropped in what game uh, what game do you hope receives a remastered edition seeing as every single game on the planet now is being remastered we're not actually getting new games we're just getting old games recycled honestly not the whole time going back to your last question about which console would I lean towards in future if I even got a whiff a tiny whiff of a Jack and Daxter remaster for the PS5 I would be on it straight away oh, like it's terrifying <laughs> Jack and Daxter or here's a, here's a side question Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter uh, I never played Jack and Daxter uh, so Ratchet well, and Clank why well, you gotta do me like that come on yeah yeah because I, I've actually <laughs> played both I played Ratchet and Clank more but mm. every time I went to my friend's house Jack and Dexter put that in the fucking I think I got Ratchet and Clank after Jack and Daxter so like it's a very very close one but just going by the fact that Jack and Daxter is the first one um, I'm going to have to go with Jack and really Daxter. that's kind of against the, the norm you hipster <laughs> okay so now after you rudely interrupted that question go ahead what games would you like to see remastered probably Jack and Dexter probably yeah yeah <laughs> no not at all would you rather see like a new entry or just Remaster. Uh, remaster of the very first game, the precursor. Was well, the recent? Because I didn't play the new Ratchet and Clank. Well, not new. Is that a remaster or was it like a redo? I think uh, it was a remaster. Wasn't it? it was. It was like a soft reboot. Yeah. So they kind of based on the movie. Based on the movie, yeah. And the okay. movie. I never took, watched the actual Ratchet. It was a movie. <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> not it's, not, it's not terribly <laughs> great at all. Um, they basically just took like plot points from one and three. They kind of ignored two and just kind of unified it into into one story mm. and then just like redid the, the, the graphics kind of went in a more like Pixar-esque yeah. kind of style yeah I liked Ratchet and Clank 2 Ratchet and Clank 2 was deadly yeah yeah, that's really good, yeah. really good if they were going to do like a sequel to the 2016 reboot I'd like to see them cover the story of 2 because the proto pets and all and it was just you know it was cool like oh those were so adorable they, they would look so cool in 
the, the art style of the ring was good. Oh, like. Imagine the plushies and Funko Pops being thrown at you. Oh, GameStop wet their pants. Mm-hmm. Okay. So cats have games anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're well, wearing all just the wall of Funko Pops. Like, you're going to have to hold that. No hold that, hold that, hold that. Game. GameStop coming up in the questions. So oh, we're going to get there. What game do you want remastered? You could probably guess it was Metal Gear. That's Metal Gear One. Yeah, Metal Gear One. Who? What? What name are we going with? Are we going with uh, Shadow Moses? Yeah, like Metal Gear Solid Shadow Moses incident. I would fucking shit my cat myself. It's we definitely good. have to cover. That's it. not going to happen because people have tried to remaster it and they've been shut down. Yeah. And there are beautiful videos out there of like I played one remastered first scenes and it's gorgeous and they've shut it down. Oh, like people do now on like Unreal Engine. And yeah. Yeah. Like and are you, did you see the everything was the Metal Gear experience where someone actually like we like a museum yeah, yeah, yeah and it has like artwork unused artwork like they have voice clips from David Hayter like thanking everyone in the series now it's fucking amazing to look at obviously like it's a first person perspective you're walking through this place and it's like you just you see oh it's amazing oh, it's absolutely amazing but uh, yeah we're never going to get it because uh, Hideo and uh, Konami don't, 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 don't really like each other which actually that's a video that James will be narrating Coming up soon on the channel about uh, Metal Gear Solid Five, so stay tuned for that one. No, I don't know what we talk about Metal Gear Solid Five. You will be. <laughs> Tough shit. Makes me hard anyway, sorry. <laughs> Personally, what game would I like remastered? Um, I suppose I'd be on the same boat as James with Metal Gear Solid One, hmm. just because I would really, really, really like to see that opening level redesigned yeah because they've done it so many times like we said where people have recreated this level I would really really like to open the game knowing that I'm going to get past that stage like it looks amazing even on PS1 that that opening scene is it's really so really good and then the GameCube version the Twin Snakes uh, yeah, I tried to play it I have it I've tried to play it nah, it just hurts to play it it's not it doesn't stay true to the original it's basically Metal Gear Solid 2 but Metal Gear Imagine how good would it here be? Have you ever played them yourself? Um, I played and beat two, and that was it. Like I've yeah, never the weakest like, in the series. <laughs> like, yeah, I, I briefly played like three, but it just wasn't for me. Like I just yeah. really, I yeah, I don't have. The was patience. it the theme song? No, I don't have the patience for. <laughs> you at least get to the ladder scene where you're like. No, it's just miles into the game, the, climbing up a ladder. The theme song <laughs> plays fully by the time you get to the top. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> and feedback. you have to hold up. Damn, Kojima's an artist. He is. Um, he is. Like, it's like a loading scene, but you're climbing the ladder. Yeah. I've seen the the, yeah. the Unreal Engine footage of the of a remastered Snake Ear, and I, that's what I'm going with. Snake Ear remastered. Mm-hmm. So we have Jack and Daxter, mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid One, yeah. and Snake Ear. I think that's a pretty. I'd fucking buy that collection. Mm-hmm. And like, is it just from a visual perspective that you'd like to see a remaster, or is it no. any sort of changes or to the game? I or think anything? I would leave. If you gave me Phantom Pain's controls, yeah, in Snake Ear, hmm. oh my god, because like let's say the boss battles with like the fear, the fear is a, a character who's like camouflage, like Predator on a human hmm. up in the trees, and like you have these like real dodgy controls where like, you have to click a button to go into the first oh, person. God, like that. It's so painful. <laughs> it's really really awkward. Yeah. I could when I first played Snake Ear, I could only do it when I crouched down prone, and it automatically puts you into it. Yeah. So like any time like. <laughs> I, um, an, an enemy saw me hang on <laughs> yeah. so like yeah better controls give me phantom pain in snake ears world hmm. and you can have my wallet this house this camera this channel everything <laughs> <laughs> and my body for it I fucking it's would. funny you should say Rude. that because my friend Hideo Kojima gave me this this copyright <laughs> oh, don't even joke in there. okay so moving on I actually did a bit I even like, gave someone credit for this VentureBeat.com released an article on the 5th of June that GameStop's future is grim after its stock prices crumble. Where do you see gaming going in the future in terms of sale? Do you see gaming heading towards all digital or will some other franchise arise from the ashes of GameStop's suspected doom? So basically, where do you see gaming being in terms of retail? Will there be retail gaming anymore? Nah. Like, I know we walk into GameStop and we see 4 million teddies and I don't want to see that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's basically yeah. just merch stuff now yeah. at this point yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't know I'm thinking like if they kept the game in GameStop and maybe branched into like different gaming systems maybe start going into like tabletop gaming and have a, a mix I, of games in the place I think I said it the last podcast yes, but I went in there it. I went in there and I was looking at the games and your one came up to me and she didn't even 
asked me what game she was trying to cross out this stuff like yeah. but she was like what shows are you into what TV shows do you like do you like this do you like that and I was like oh, I mean looking at the games I don't really care yeah like, gone are the like days where you could just, you could just go in and, yeah, gone are the days you could just go in and browse quietly and be left alone like they're they yeah, really you just be like, like they, you know they have um they have like quotas to reach so like they they have to be aggressive mm-hmm. with the sales so like I do understand it but yeah. at the same time like just, just that's okay home. if you have the mm-hmm. core things that people want to buy yeah like 50 million co- copies of Titanfall 1 for Xbox One in the bargain bin isn't going to satisfy me I remember I said it last time I got two games during the Playstation 2 era which was probably the best for GameStop ever mm. so much yes um, you get two games do you know what, like let's say like let's say the current run of games like let's say this this year like last year they used to have like a two for 50 offer on like those top games of that year yeah so I got like Return of the King and Star Wars Bounty Hunter for 50 oh, euro a man of culture and I see that was absolutely <laughs> amazing that kept me going for ages yeah. like oh, now 50 euro that's like the game that's like looking for attention like a, a startup game for a company you're going to be paying 70 euro plus for like a game that's going to last you a week oh, like, like sort of like indie third party yeah. stuff yeah like mm-hmm. what, what would just be like do you know the way Uncharted Lost Legacy was sold at a discount price because it's shorter than the other ones mm-hmm. and it still cost you 50 euro yeah I was like come on come on I know it dropped down to 40 really really soon after release but come on yeah, I pay for it though Uncharted's quality Uncharted's great yeah but that's just a, that's like the best of a bad bunch like yeah like um, I've no like I said before I've no problem with an 8 hour story driven game hmm. but not one that cost me 80 euro where yeah. I'm paying a tenner an hour that's more than I earn <laughs> 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 so um, I don't think all digital will ever happen yeah because like even just um, there will always always be people that want to feel a sense of ownership when yeah. they're buying games like I I do buy digital games but if it has a physical copy I will buy the physical copy because I just mm-hmm. like having it there I love I like the cover art uh, I know colour manuals aren't a thing anymore but if it has a manual even better <laughs> or a shitty one piece of page <laughs> with the controls on it like an, a, an ad for Playstation Plus or something like that's that's the most we get but I do love like the cover art and reading the back and stuff and just having it there as a collectible good PS1 manual by what it was the day oh, big, oh big, they were amazing big, yeah. fucking and I have all the lore in it <laughs> in <laughs> five different languages <laughs> and just the best thing ever yeah, or even like uh, just uh, like Jack and Daxter just because it's fresh in my mind like if you open the manual uh, there's actually like little uh, like funny like journal segments written by Daxter because oh, yeah. uh, like in the second game like Jack gets captured when they go to, go to the future that's the start again it's not a spoiler uh, and Daxter has to live on the street for two years so he's actually like talking about his time on the street they released side. that in a spin off didn't they uh, yeah there was Daxter for I PSP. finished that game yeah. five times in the PSP because every time we went to Harlem matches I sat in the car playing that instead of getting <laughs> out of the car no I refuse you just sat there playing it until the go up day <laughs> five fucking times and I'd still keep playing it it's so good it's like. so good hmm. I didn't I thought that was like a what if scenario I didn't realise that was part of the main series no no it's actually what Daxter did for two years on the streets while Jack was in prison getting tortured and growing up and yeah because gro- he promises he's going to get him and then it's like six months later and just two, him just like years later. him bumming money off people on the street oh something. six months exactly yeah yeah so GameStop shit yeah I just like we have CEX which is just like what GameStop used to be great for yeah but like when I don't go to CEX looking for let's say Star Wars Fallen Order when it comes out I'm not going to be going there I want to go to somewhere actually surprisingly enough that's Argos for me now yeah. yeah, Argos do really good prices on new games. Yeah, yeah they're they're beating GameStop at their their own game. The like GameStop would be selling it for seventy. Mm. Argos will be selling it for fifty nine ninety nine. Like, mm. yeah, and you can reserve before you go in. That's GameStop's pre order system gone. And people won't hound you to buy Funko Pops when you go yeah. into Argos. They just so say you have your slip there, love. <laughs> would you like Funko Pop? Do you need game protection? <laughs> yeah, fuck off with your game protection. Nowadays, you do not need game protection because the system is just perfect. Like, you'd install your game, the disc isn't going to go through any trouble. Yeah, I mean, like, Blu ray discs have, like, a protective coating on them anyway, yeah. so the chances of it actually getting damaged, like, unless the disc itself is faulty, like, out yeah. the door, then the chances of you. You must look at you and be like, 
this guy looks like an idiot. I'm gonna sell him. He looks like the kind of guy that's gonna like, scratch his games. I haven't encountered that problem since before PlayStation Three, hmm. where my game discs have been so badly damaged. Yeah. And that was just sheer neglect, like from my behalf, like using Every games to like hands open there. <laughs> game case you open up, yeah. Yeah. using your fucking <laughs> PlayStation Two disc to like scrape paint off the wall, and then like, oh yeah, I'm gonna play this now. Why doesn't this work? Get me the toothpaste. That'll fix it. Yeah, yeah. and then especially for like Actually, Switch characters, getting damaged. Have you ever used like, that? like, how much do they think I'm gonna lick it? <laughs> yeah, the Switch cartridge. I'm not a fan of cartridges, but mm. the Switch cartridges are very handy. It's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. I did have a Switch for about three months, but uh. Sadly, it just wasn't meant to be for me. Okay, so yeah, maybe we like that sometimes. We're we're out of questions now. So before we sign off, I've actually uh, inspired from the last video. I have two trivia questions ready for you. Oh. Yeah, oh, these ones are quite easy to start us off. Go on, hit me with it. Go on. Question one: The PlayStation One was released in Japan in 1994, I believe. What console was released one week beforehand? In Japan or in Japan. In Japan. Before the PS One. Yeah. No, I'm quoting um a source on the internet, so could be very fucking wrong. The Nintendo sixty four? No. no. I'm gonna say it's I'll give you this one. Sega it, oh! No wait, wait. Planet. Sega Saturn. That's sir. That's what I was James. <laughs> right, Question you, two. You get the signature, <laughs> you get the next one. Yeah, you get the main chair next time. <laughs> Question two. What is the best-selling video game of all time? The best-selling video game of all time. This is according to the same website. Oh. No, this is gonna. This is like. Oh, for fuck's sake! Kind of answer. The only correct answer is. Knack two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just got gamecast. Chair, please. <laughs> Take it seriously. <laughs> seriously, yes. Now it is. It, it is one in hindsight. You're just like. Well, obviously, it's going to be a high-selling game with a huge, huge player base upon release and a sustained player base for a very, very fucking long time afterwards. Loads and loads of expansion. Oh, oh what's that fucking thing? World of Warcraft. Two for two. <laughs> I was going to say Diablo. I was going to say Diablo. Diablo? No, no. Just think about World of Warcraft. One of the biggest players the world. Season. No, Diablo is um, Diablo is because oh, no, it's, it's Blizzard. Yeah, they're both Blizzard. Yeah. Blizzard. Oh, they're both, yeah. Blizzard. Okay. Yeah, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, guys. So, if you want to keep an eye on our content, please subscribe. Uh, check out Jay Gamer on Facebook, where I post all the news about Gamecast. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you.